Altman, Richard E. Taylor, Michael Smith, and Bertram Brockhaus were Nobel Prize winning scientists. Captions Images of Donovan Bailey, Chantal Petitclair, Terry Fox, and Wayne Gretzky. Image of Mark Tewksbury with caption, Mark Tewksbury, Olympic gold medalist and prominent activist for gay and lesbian Canadians. Image of Paul Henderson with caption, In 1972, Paul Henderson scored the winning goal for Canada in the Canada-Soviet Summit Series. This goal is often referred to as the goal heard around the world and is still remembered today as an important event in both sports and cultural history. Image of Catriona LeMay Doan with caption, Catriona LeMay Doan carries the flag after winning a gold medal in speed skating at the 2002 Olympic Winter Games. Image of a Canadian football game with caption, Canadian football is a popular game that differs in a number of ways from American football. Professional teams in the Canadian Football League, CFL, compete for the championship Grey Cup, donated by Lord Grey, the Governor-General, in 1909. Great Canadian Discoveries and Inventions Canadians have made various discoveries and inventions. Some of the most famous are listed below. Alexander Graham Bell hit on the idea of the telephone at his summer house in Canada. Joseph Armand Bombardier invented the snowmobile, a lightweight winter vehicle. Sir Sanford Fleming invented the worldwide system of standard time zones. Matthew Evans and Henry Woodward together invented the first electric light bulb and later sold the patent to Thomas Edison, who more famously commercialized the light bulb. Reginald Fessenden contributed to the invention of radio, sending the first wireless voice message in the world. Dr. Wilder Penfield was a pioneering brain surgeon at McGill University in Montreal and was known as the greatest living Canadian. Dr. John A. Hobbs invented the first cardiac pacemaker used today to save the lives of people with heart disorders. SPAR Aerospace and the National Research Council invented the Canadarm, a robotic arm used in outer space. Mike Lazaratis and Jim Balsillie of Research in Motion, a wireless communications company known for its most famous invention, the BlackBerry. Caption Image of Canadian scientific innovation at work with Canadarm 2. Image of Sir Frederick Banting with caption, Sir Frederick Banting of Toronto and Charles Best discovered insulin, a hormone to treat diabetes that has saved 16 million lives worldwide. Want to learn more about Canada's history? Visit a museum or national historic site. Through artifacts, works of art, stories, images and documents, museums explore the diverse events and accomplishments that formed Canada's history. Museums can be found in almost every city and town across Canada. National historic sites are located in all provinces and territories and include such diverse places as battlefields, archaeological sites, buildings, and sacred spaces. To find a museum or national historic site in your community or region, visit the websites of the Virtual Museum of Canada and Parks Canada listed at the end of this guide. The prosperity and diversity of our country depend on all Canadians working together to face challenges of the future. In seeking to become a citizen, you are joining a country that with your active participation will continue to grow and thrive. How will you make your contribution to Canada? How Canadians Govern Themselves there are three key facts about Canada's system of government. Our country is a federal state, a parliamentary democracy, and a constitutional monarchy. Caption. Image of Queen Elizabeth II during the opening of the Parliament in 1957. Image of the Parliament Hill in Ottawa. Federal State. There are federal, provincial, territorial, and municipal governments in Canada. 
The responsibilities of the federal and provincial governments were defined in 1867 in the British North America Act, now known as the Constitution Act, 1867. In our federal state, the federal government takes responsibility for matters of national and international concern. These include defense, foreign policy, interprovincial trade and communications, currency, navigation, criminal law, and citizenship. The provinces are responsible for municipal government, education, health, natural resources, property and civil rights, and highways. The federal government and the provinces share jurisdiction over agriculture and immigration. Federalism allows different provinces to adopt policies tailored to their own populations and gives provinces the flexibility to experiment with new ideas and policies. Every province has its own elected legislative assembly, like the House of Commons in Ottawa. The three northern territories, which have small populations, do not have the status of provinces, but their governments and assemblies carry out many of the same functions. Parliamentary Democracy In Canada's parliamentary democracy, the people elect members to the House of Commons in Ottawa and to the provincial and territorial legislatures. These representatives are responsible for passing laws, approving and monitoring expenditures, and keeping the government accountable. Cabinet ministers are responsible to the elected representatives, which means they must retain the confidence of the House and have to resign if they are defeated in a non-confidence vote. Parliament has three parts, the Sovereign, a Queen or King, the Senate, and the House of Commons. Provincial legislatures comprise the Lieutenant Governor and the elected Assembly. In the federal government, the Prime Minister selects the cabinet ministers and is responsible for the operations and policy of the government. The House of Commons is the representative chamber made up of members of Parliament elected by the people traditionally every four years. Senators are appointed by the Governor-General on the advice of the Prime Minister and serve until age 75. Both the House of Commons and the Senate consider and review bills, which are proposals for new laws. No bill can become law in Canada until it has been passed by both chambers and has received royal assent, granted by the Governor-General on behalf of the Sovereign. Living in a democracy, Canadian citizens have the right and the responsibility to participate in making decisions that affect them. It is important for Canadians aged 18 or more to participate in their democracy by voting in federal, provincial, or territorial and municipal elections. The following are the steps for the legislative process in Canada, or how a bill becomes law. Step 1 is called first reading. The bill is considered read for the first time and is printed. Step 2 is called second reading. In this step, members debate the bill's principle. Step 3 is the committee stage. At this stage, committee members study the bill clause by clause. Step 4 is the report stage. At this stage, members can make other amendments to the bill. Step 5 is called the third reading. At this stage, members debate and vote on the bill. Step 6 is the Senate stage. The bill will follow a similar process in the Senate. Step 7 is called Royal Assent. The bill receives Royal Assent after being passed by both Houses. Constitutional Monarchy As a constitutional monarchy, Canada's head of state is a hereditary sovereign, a queen or king, who reigns in accordance with the Constitution, the rule of law. The Sovereign is a part of Parliament, playing an important non-partisan role as the focus of citizenship and allegiance, most visibly during royal visits to Canada. Her Majesty is a symbol of Canadian sovereignty, a guardian of constitutional freedoms, and a reflection of our history. The Royal Family's example of lifelong service to the community is an encouragement for citizens to give their best to their country. As head of the Commonwealth, the Sovereign links Canada to 53 other nations that cooperate to advance social, economic, and cultural progress. Other constitutional monarchies include Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Australia, New Zealand, the Netherlands, Spain, Thailand, Japan, Jordan, and Morocco. There is a clear distinction in Canada between the head of state, the Sovereign, and the head of government, the Prime Minister, 
who actually directs the governing of the country. The Sovereign is represented in Canada by the Governor-General, who is appointed by the Sovereign on the advice of the Prime Minister, usually for five years. In each of the ten provinces, the Sovereign is represented by the Lieutenant Governor, who is appointed by the Governor-General on the advice of the Prime Minister, also normally for five years. The interplay between the three branches of governments, the executive, legislative, and judicial, which work together but also sometimes in creative tension, helps to secure the rights and freedoms of Canadians. Each provincial and territorial government has an elected legislature where provincial and territorial laws are passed. Depending on the province or territory, the members of the legislature are called members of the Legislative Assembly, or MLAs, members of the National Assembly, or MNAs, members of the Provincial Parliament, or MPPs, or members of the House of Assembly, or MHAs. In each province, the Premier has a role similar to that of the Prime Minister in the Federal Government, just as the Lieutenant Governor has a role similar to that of the Governor General. In the three territories, the Commissioner represents the Federal Government and plays a ceremonial role. Caption Image of the Governor-General David Johnston, Canada's 28th Governor-General since the Confederation. Canada's System of Government Parliament is comprised of three elements. The Sovereign, who is represented in Canada by the Governor-General, the Senate, which is appointed on the Prime Minister's recommendation, and the House of Commons, which is elected by voters. The three branches of government are the Executive Branch, the Legislative Branch, and the Judicial Branch. The executive branch consists of the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. The legislative branch consists of the Parliament. The judicial branch consists of the different levels of courts in Canada. At the highest level, there is the Supreme Court of Canada, which consists of nine judges that are appointed by the Governor-General. The Federal Court of Canada and the Provincial Courts are also part of the judiciary. Federal Elections Canadians vote in elections for the people they want to represent them in the House of Commons. In each election, voters may re-elect the same members of the House of Commons or choose new ones. Members of the House of Commons are also known as Members of Parliament or MPs. Under legislation passed by Parliament, federal elections must be held on the third Monday in October every four years following the most recent general election. The Prime Minister may ask the Governor-General to call an earlier election. Canada is divided into 308 electoral districts, also known as ridings or constituencies. An electoral district is a geographical area represented by a Member of Parliament, or MP. The citizens in each electoral district elect one MP who sits in the House of Commons to represent them as well as all Canadians. Canadian citizens who are 18 years old or older may run in a federal election. The people who run for office are called candidates. There can be many candidates in an electoral district. The people in each electoral district vote for the candidate and political party of their choice. The candidate who receives the most votes becomes the MP for that electoral district. Voting one of the privileges of Canadian citizenship is the right to vote. You are eligible to vote in a federal election or cast a ballot in a federal referendum if you are a Canadian citizen and at least 18 years old on voting day and on the voters list. The voters list used during federal elections and referendums are produced from the National Register of Electors by a neutral agency of Parliament called Elections Canada. This is a permanent database of Canadian citizens 18 years of age or older who are qualified to vote in federal elections and referendums. Once an election has been called, Elections Canada mails a voter information card to each elector whose name is in the National Register of Electors. The card lists when and where you vote and the number to call if you require an interpreter or other special services. Even if you choose not to be listed in the National Register of Electors or do not receive a voter information card, you can still be added to the voters list at any time, including on Election Day. 
To vote either on election day or at advanced polls, go to the polling station listed on your voter information card. Caption Image of the House of Commons Chamber Secret Ballot Canadian law secures the right to a secret ballot. This means that no one can watch you vote and no one should look at how you voted. You may choose to discuss how you voted with others, but no one, including family members, your employer or union representative, has the right to insist that you tell them how you voted. Immediately after the polling stations close, election officers count the ballots and the results are announced on radio and television and in the newspapers. After an election. Ordinarily, after an election, the leader of the political party with the most seats in the House of Commons is invited by the Governor General to form the government. After being appointed by the Governor General, the leader of this party becomes the Prime Minister. If the party in power holds at least half of the seats in the House of Commons, this is called a majority government. If the party in power holds less than half of the seats in the House of Commons, this is called a minority government. The Prime Minister and the party in power run the government as long as they have the support or confidence of the majority of the MPs. When the House of Commons votes on a major issue such as the budget, this is considered a matter of confidence. If a majority of the members of the House of Commons vote against a major government decision, the party in power is defeated, which usually results in the Prime Minister asking the Governor General, on behalf of the Sovereign, to call an election. The Prime Minister chooses the Ministers of the Crown, most of them from among members of the House of Commons. Cabinet Ministers are responsible for running the federal government departments. The Prime Minister and the Cabinet Ministers are called the Cabinet, and they make important decisions about how the country is governed. They prepare the budget and propose most new laws. Their decisions can be questioned by all members of the House of Commons. The opposition party with the most members of the House of Commons is the Official Opposition, or Her Majesty's Loyal Opposition. The role of opposition parties is to peacefully oppose or try to improve government proposals. There are three major political parties currently represented in the House of Commons. The Conservative Party, Liberal Party, and New Democratic Party. Caption, Image of the House of Commons in Session. Voting Procedures During an Election Period. The following provides more information about voting in Canada. The Voter Information Card. Electors whose information is in the National Register of Electors will receive a Voter Information Card. This confirms that your name is on the voters list and states when and where you vote. If you do not receive a Voter Information Card, call your local elections office to ensure that you are on the voters list. If you do not have the number, call Elections Canada in Ottawa at 1-800-463-6868. If you cannot or do not wish to vote on Election Day, you can vote at the advance polls or by special ballot. The dates and location are on your voter information card. On Election Day, go to your polling station. The location is on your voter information card. Bring this card and proof of your identity and address to the polling station. To mark your ballot, mark an X in the circle next to the name of the candidate of your choice. Your vote is secret. You will be invited to go behind the screen to mark your ballot. Once marked, fold it and present it to the poll officials. At the ballot box, the poll official will tear off the ballot number and give your ballot back to you to deposit in the ballot box. When the polls close, every ballot is counted and the results are made public. You can see the results on television or on the Elections Canada website, www.elections.ca. Other Levels of Government in Canada 
local or municipal government plays an important role in the lives of our citizens. Municipal governments usually have a council that passes laws, called bylaws, that affect only the local community. The council usually includes a mayor or a reeve and councillors or aldermen. Municipalities are normally responsible for urban or regional planning, streets and roads, sanitation such as garbage removal, snow removal, firefighting, ambulance, and other emergency services, recreation facilities, public transit, and some local health and social services. Most major urban centers have municipal police forces. Provincial, territorial, and municipal elections are held by secret ballot, but the rules are not the same as those for federal elections. It is important to find out the rules for voting in provincial, territorial, and local elections so that you can exercise your right to vote. The First Nations have band chiefs and councillors who have major responsibilities on First Nations reserves, including housing, schools, and other services. There is a number of provincial, regional, and national Aboriginal organizations that are a voice for First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people in their relationships with the federal, provincial, and territorial governments. The following information will help you understand the differences between federal, provincial, and territorial, and municipal levels of government. At the federal government level, the elected officials are called Members of Parliament, or MPs. Some responsibilities at this level of government include national defense, foreign policy, citizenship, policing, international trade, criminal justice, aboriginal affairs, immigration, agriculture, environment. Of these examples, immigration, agriculture, and the environment are shared responsibilities with the provincial or territorial level of government. At the provincial or territorial government level, the elected officials are called one of the following titles, depending on the province or territory. Members of the Legislative Assembly, or MLAs. Members of the National Assembly, or MNAs. Members of the Provincial Parliament, or MPPs, or Members of the House of Assembly, or MHAs. Some responsibilities at this level of government include education, health care, natural resources, highways, policing in Ontario and Quebec, property, and civil rights. At the municipal or local government level, the elected officials are called councillors or aldermen, and the senior elected official is called a mayor or reeve. Some responsibilities at this level of government include social and community health, recycling programs, transportation and utilities, snow removal, policing, firefighting, emergency services. Caption, image of the Provincial Assembly in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. How much do you know about your government? The following are some questions that you can use to test your knowledge about your government. At the federal government level, who is Canada's head of state? What is the name of the representative of the Queen of Canada, the Governor General? What is the name of the Prime Minister, the head of government? What is the name of the political party in power? What is the name of the leader of the opposition? What is the name of the party representing Her Majesty's loyal opposition? What are the names of the other opposition parties and leaders? Who is your Member of Parliament, or MP, in Ottawa? What is your federal electoral district called? At the provincial government level, who is the lieutenant governor, the representative of the queen in your province? Who is your premier or head of government? What is the name of the provincial party in power? 
What are the names of the provincial opposition parties and leaders? Who is your provincial representative? At the territorial government level, what is the name of the commissioner who represents the federal government in your territory? What is the name of the premier? What is the name of your territorial representative? At the municipal government level, what is the name of the municipality where you live? Who is the head of the municipal government, mayor or reeve? Caption, image of the Quebec City Hall, constructed in 1895 to 1896. The justice system. The Canadian justice system guarantees everyone due process under the law. Our judicial system is founded on the presumption of innocence in criminal matters, meaning everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Canada's legal system is based on a heritage that includes the rule of law, freedom under the law, democratic principles, and due process. Due process is the principle that the government must respect all of the legal rights a person is entitled to under the law. Canada is governed by an organized system of laws. These laws are the written rules intended to guide people in our society. They are made by elected representatives. The courts settle disputes and the police enforce the laws. The law in Canada applies to everyone, including judges, politicians, and the police. Our laws are intended to provide order in society and a peaceful way to settle disputes and to express the values and beliefs of Canadians. Caption. Image of the scales of justice from the Vancouver Law Courts with the caption, The blindfolded lady justice symbolizes the impartial manner in which our laws are administered blind to all considerations but the facts. Caption, image of a border guard with a sniffer dog inspecting the trunk of a car at the Canada-US border. Courts. The Supreme Court of Canada is our country's highest court. The Federal Court of Canada deals with matters concerning the federal government. In most provinces, there is an appeal court and a trial court sometimes called the Court of Queen's Bench or the Supreme Court. There are also provincial courts for lesser offenses, family courts, traffic courts, and small claims courts for civil cases involving small sums of money. Police. The police are there to keep people safe and to enforce the law. You can ask the police for help in all kinds of situations. If there's been an accident, if someone has stolen something from you, if you're a victim of assault, if you see a crime taking place, or if someone you know has gone missing. There are different types of police in Canada. There are provincial police forces in Ontario and Quebec, and municipal police departments in all provinces. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or RCMP, enforce federal laws throughout Canada, and serve as the provincial police in all provinces and territories except Ontario and Quebec, as well as in some municipalities. Remember, the police are there to help you. You can also question the police about their service or conduct if you feel you need to. Almost all police forces in Canada have a process by which you can bring your concerns to the police and seek action. Getting legal help. Lawyers can help you with legal problems and act for you in court. If you cannot pay for a lawyer, in most communities there are legal aid services available free of charge or at a low cost. Captions. Image of jury benches. Image of a police constable helping a young boy. Image of a prison with caption, Prisons have an essential role in punishing criminals and deterring crime. Canadian Symbols Canada has many important symbols, objects, events, and people that have special meaning. Together, 
They help explain what it means to be Canadian and express our national identity. Important Canadian symbols have been discussed throughout this booklet. The Canadian Crown The Crown has been a symbol of the state in Canada for 400 years. Canada has been a constitutional monarchy in its own right since Confederation in 1867 during Queen Victoria's reign. Queen Elizabeth II, who has been Queen of Canada since 1952, marked her Golden Jubilee in 2002 and celebrates her Diamond Jubilee, or 60 years as Sovereign, in 2012. The Crown is a symbol of government, including Parliament, the legislatures, the courts, police services, and the Canadian forces. Caption Image of the Mace of the House of Commons in Ottawa Flags in Canada A new Canadian flag was raised for the first time in 1965. The red-white-red pattern comes from the flag of the Royal Military College Kingston, founded in 1876. Red and white had been colours of France and England since the Middle Ages, and the national colours of Canada since 1921. The Union Jack is our official royal flag. The Canadian Red Ensign served as the Canadian flag for about 100 years. The provinces and territories also have flags that embody their distinct traditions. Captions Image of the Canadian Flag of 1965 Image of the Canadian Red Ensign with caption, The Canadian Red Ensign served as the national flag for a hundred years and has been carried officially by veterans since 2005. The Maple Leaf The Maple Leaf is Canada's best-known symbol. Maple leaves were adopted as a symbol by French Canadians in the 1700s, have appeared on Canadian uniforms and insignia since the 1850s, and are carved into the headstones of our fallen soldiers buried overseas and in Canada. The Fleur de Lis It is said that the lily flower, Fleur de Lis, was adopted by the French king in the year 496. It became the symbol of French royalty for more than a thousand years, including the colony of New France. Revived at Confederation, the Fleur de Lis was included in the Canadian Red Ensign, in 1948, Quebec adopted its own flag, based on the cross and the fleur-de-lis. Coat of Arms and Motto As an expression of national pride after the First World War, Canada adopted an official coat of arms and a national motto, Amare Asquad Mare, which in Latin means from sea to sea. The arms contain symbols of England, France, Scotland and Ireland, as well as red maple leaves. Today the arms can be seen on dollar bills, government documents, and public buildings. Caption Image of the Royal Arms of Canada and of the Parliament Image of the snowbirds with caption The snowbirds are a Canadian icon. The image shows 431 Air Demonstration Squadron. Parliament Buildings the towers, arches, sculptures, and stained glass of the Parliament buildings embody the French, English, and Aboriginal traditions and the Gothic Revival architecture popular in the time of Queen Victoria. The buildings were completed in the 1860s. The centre block was destroyed by an accidental fire in 1916 and rebuilt in 1922. The library is the only part of the original building remaining. The Peace Tower was completed in 1927 in memory of the First World War. The memorial chamber within the tower contains the Books of Remembrance in which are written the names of soldiers, sailors and airmen who died serving Canada in wars or while on duty. The provincial legislatures are architectural treasures. The Quebec National Assembly is built in the French Second Empire style while the legislatures of the other provinces are Baroque, Romanesque, and Neoclassical, reflecting the Greco-Roman heritage of Western civilization in which democracy originated. Popular Sports 
Hockey is Canada's most popular spectator sport and is considered to be the national winter sport. Ice hockey was developed in Canada in the 1800s. The National Hockey League plays for the championship Stanley Cup, donated by Lord Stanley, the Governor General, in 1892. The Clarkson Cup, established in 2005 by Adrian Clarkson, the 26th Governor General, and the first of Asian origin, is awarded for women's hockey. Many young Canadians play hockey at school, in a hockey league, or on quiet streets, road hockey or street hockey, and are taken to the hockey rink by their parents. Canadian children have collected hockey cards for generations. Canadian football is the second most popular sport. Curling, an ice game introduced by Scottish pioneers, is popular. Lacrosse, an ancient sport first played by Aboriginals, is the official summer sport. Soccer has the most registered players of any game in Canada. Caption Image of the Montreal Canadiens, Stanley Cup champions in 1978. The Beaver The Beaver was adopted centuries ago as a symbol of the Hudson's Bay Company. It became an emblem of the Saint-Jean-Baptiste Society, a French-Canadian patriotic association in 1834, and was also adopted by other groups. This industrious rodent can be seen on the five-cent coin, on the coats of arms of Saskatchewan and Alberta, and of cities such as Montreal and Toronto. Caption. Image of a beaver. Canada's official languages. English and French are the two official languages and are important symbols of identity. English speakers, Anglophones, and French speakers, Francophones, have lived together in partnership and creative tension for more than 300 years. You must have adequate knowledge of English or French to become a Canadian citizen. Adult applicants 55 years of age and over are exempted from this requirement. Parliament passed the Official Languages Act in 1969. It has three main objectives. Establish equality between French and English in Parliament, the Government of Canada, and institutions subject to the Act. Maintain and develop official language minority communities in Canada. And promote equality of French and English in Canadian society. Caption Image of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in Ottawa. National Anthem. O Canada was proclaimed as the National Anthem in 1980. It was first sung in Quebec City in 1880. French and English Canadians sing different words to the National Anthem. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts, we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, terre de nos aïeux, ton front est saint de fleurons glorieux. Car ton bras sait porter l'épée, il sait porter la croix. Ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants exploits. Et ta valeur, de foi trompée, protégera nos foyers et nos droits. Protégera nos foyers et nos droits. Royal Anthem The Royal Anthem of Canada, God Save the Queen or King can be played or sung on any occasion when Canadians wish to honour the Sovereign. God Save the Queen God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen, God save the Queen. Send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us, God save the Queen. Dieu protège la Reine Dieu protège la Reine de sa main souveraine, Vive la Reine, qu'un règne glorieux, long et victorieux, ronde son peuple heureux, 
Vive la Reine. The Order of Canada and Other Honours. All countries have ways to recognize outstanding citizens. Official awards are called honours, consisting of orders, decorations, and medals. After using British honours for many years, Canada started its own honours system with the Order of Canada in 1967, the Centennial of Confederation. If you know of fellow citizens who you think are worthy of recognition, you are welcome to nominate them. Information on nominations for many of these honours can be found at www.gg.ca slash document dot ASPX question mark ID equals 70 question mark ampersand LAN equals ENG. Caption. Image of Oscar Peterson with caption. Jazz pianist Oscar Peterson receives the Order of Canada from Roland Michener, the 20th Governor General, in 1973. In the centre are Nora Michener and a portrait of Vincent Massey, the 18th Governor General. The Victoria Cross. The Victoria Cross, VC, is the highest honour available to Canadians and is awarded for the most conspicuous bravery, a daring or preeminent act of valour or self-sacrifice, or extreme devotion to duty in the presence of the enemy. The VC has been awarded to 96 Canadians since 1854. Six recipients are included below with their images. Then Lieutenant Alexander Roberts Dunn, born in present-day Toronto, served in the British Army in the charge of the Light Brigade at Balaclava, 1854, in the Crimean War, and was the first Canadian to be awarded the Victoria Cross. Able seaman William Hall of Horton, Nova Scotia, whose parents were American slaves, was the first black man to be awarded the VC for his role in the Siege of Lucknow during the Indian Rebellion of 1857. Corporal Philip Conowal, born in Ukraine, showed exceptional courage in the Battle of Hill 70 in 1917 and became the first member of the Canadian Corps not born in the British Empire to be awarded the VC. Flying Ace Captain Billy Bishop, born in Owen Sound, Ontario, earned the VC in the Royal Flying Corps during the First World War and was later an honorary air marshal of the Royal Canadian Air Force. Captain Paul Triquet of Cabano, Quebec, earned the VC leading his men and a handful of tanks in the attack on Casa Berardi in Italy in 1943 during the Second World War and was later a brigadier. Lieutenant Robert Hampton Gray, a Navy pilot born in Trail, BC, was killed while bombing and sinking a Japanese warship in August 1945, a few days before the end of the Second World War and was the last Canadian to receive the VC to date. National Public Holidays and Other Important Dates The following are some national holidays and important dates in Canada. New Year's Day is January 1st. Sir John A. Macdonald Day is January 11th. Good Friday is the Friday immediately preceding Easter Sunday. Easter Monday is the Monday immediately following Easter Sunday. Vimy Day is April 9th. Victoria Day is the Monday preceding May 25th, which is the Sovereign's birthday. Fête Nationale is a holiday celebrated in Quebec on June 24th, which is the Feast of St. John the Baptist. Canada Day is July 1st. Labor Day is the first Monday of September. Thanksgiving Day is the second Monday of October. Remembrance Day is November 11th. Sir Wilfrid Laurier Day is November 20th. Christmas Day is December 25th. Boxing Day is December 26th. Canada's economy, a trading nation. Canada has always been a trading nation and commerce remains the engine of economic growth. As Canadians, we could not maintain our standard of living without engaging in trade with other nations. In 1988, Canada enacted free trade with the United States. 
Mexico became a partner in 1994 in the broader North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, with over 444 million people and over $1 trillion in merchandise trade in 2008. Today, Canada has one of the ten largest economies in the world and is part of the G8 group of leading industrialized countries with the United States, Germany, the United Kingdom, Italy, France, Japan, and Russia. Canada's economy includes three main types of industries. Service industries provide thousands of different jobs in areas like transportation, education, healthcare, construction, banking, communications, retail services, tourism, and government. More than 75% of working Canadians now have jobs in service industries. Manufacturing industries make products to sell in Canada and around the world. Manufactured products include paper, high technology equipment, aerospace technology, automobiles, machinery, food, clothing, and many other goods. Our largest international trading partner is the United States. Natural resources industries include forestry, fishing, agriculture, mining, and energy. These industries have played an important part in the country's history and development. Today, the economy of many areas of the country still depends on developing natural resources and a large percentage of Canada's exports are natural resources commodities. Caption. Images of a lumber truck, of oil pump jacks in Alberta, of Atlantic lobster, and of a hydroelectric dam on the Saguenay River, Quebec. Canada enjoys close relations with the United States and each is the other's largest trading partner. Over three quarters of Canadian exports are destined for the USA. In fact, we have the biggest bilateral trading relationship in the world. Integrated Canada-USA supply chains compete with the rest of the world. Canada exports billions of dollars worth of energy products, industrial goods, machinery, equipment, automotive, agricultural, fishing and forestry products, and consumer goods every year. Millions of Canadians and Americans cross every year and in safety what is traditionally known as the world's longest undefended border. At Blaine in the state of Washington, the Peace Arch, inscribed with the words, Children of a Common Mother and Brethren Dwelling Together in Unity, symbolizes our close ties and common interests. Caption. Images of a car assembly plant in Oakville, Ontario, of the Port of Vancouver, of a research laboratory, of RIM's Blackberry device, and of ice wine grapes in the Niagara region in Ontario. Canada's regions. Canada is the second largest country on Earth, with 10 million square kilometers. Three oceans line Canada's frontiers the Pacific Ocean in the west, the Atlantic Ocean in the east, and the Arctic Ocean to the north. Along the southern edge of Canada lies the Canada-United States boundary. Both Canada and the USA are committed to a safe, secure, and efficient frontier. The regions of Canada. Canada includes many different geographical areas and five distinct regions, which are the Atlantic provinces, central Canada, the prairie provinces, the west coast, and the northern territories. The National Capital Ottawa, located on the Ottawa River, was chosen as the capital in 1857 by Queen Victoria, the great-great-grandmother of Queen Elizabeth II. Today, it is Canada's fourth-largest metropolitan area. The National Capital Region, 4,700 square kilometres surrounding Ottawa, preserves and enhances the area's built heritage and natural environment. Caption Image of the Ottawa's Rideau Canal with caption Ottawa's Rideau Canal, once a military waterway, is now a tourist attraction and winter skateway. Provinces and Territories Canada has ten provinces and three territories. Each province and territory has its own capital city. You should know the capital of your province or territory as well as that of Canada. Population Canada has a population of about 34 million people. While the majority live in cities, Canadians also live in small towns rural areas, and everywhere in between. Caption. Images of the Banff National Park in Alberta and of Peggy's Cove Harbour in Nova Scotia. The following list identifies the capital cities in each province and territory. In the Atlantic provinces, St. John's is the capital of Newfoundland and Labrador. Charlottetown is the capital of Prince Edward Island. Halifax is the capital of Nova Scotia. And Fredericton is the capital of New Brunswick. 
In central Canada, Quebec City is the capital of Quebec. Toronto is the capital of Ontario. In the Prairie Provinces, Winnipeg is the capital of Manitoba, Regina is the capital of Saskatchewan, and Edmonton is the capital of Alberta. On the West Coast, Victoria is the capital of British Columbia. In the Northern Territories, Iqaluit is the capital of Nunavut. Yellowknife is the capital of the Northwest Territories, and Whitehorse is the capital of the Yukon Territory. The Atlantic Provinces Atlantic Canada's coasts and natural resources, including fishing, farming, forestry and mining, have made these provinces an important part of Canada's history and development. The Atlantic Ocean brings cool winters and cool, humid summers. Newfoundland and Labrador Newfoundland and Labrador is the most easterly point in North America and has its own time zone. In addition to its natural beauty, the province has a unique heritage linked to the sea. The oldest colony of the British Empire and a strategic prize in Canada's early history, the province has long been known for its fisheries, coastal fishing villages and distinct culture. Today, offshore oil and gas extraction contributes a substantial part of the economy. Labrador also has immense hydroelectric resources. Prince Edward Island Prince Edward Island, PEI, is the smallest province, known for its beaches, red soil and agriculture, especially potatoes. PEI is the birthplace of Confederation, connected to mainland Canada by one of the longest continuous multi-span bridges in the world, the Confederation Bridge. Anne of Green Gables, set in PEI by Lucy Maud Montgomery, is a much-loved story about the adventures of a little red-headed orphan girl. Nova Scotia Nova Scotia is the most populous Atlantic province, with a rich history as the gateway to Canada. Known for the world's highest tides in the Bay of Fundy, the province's identity is linked to shipbuilding, fisheries, and shipping. As Canada's largest east coast port, deep water and ice-free, the capital, Halifax, has played an important role in Atlantic trade and defence and is home to Canada's largest naval base. Nova Scotia has a long history of coal mining, forestry and agriculture. Today, there is also offshore oil and gas exploration. The province's Celtic and Gaelic traditions sustain a vibrant culture. Nova Scotia is home to over 700 annual festivals, including the spectacular military tattoo in Halifax. New Brunswick Situated in the Appalachian Range, the province was founded by the United Empire Loyalists and has the second largest river system on North America's Atlantic coastline, the St. John River System. Forestry, agriculture, fisheries, mining, food processing and tourism are the principal industries. St. John is the largest city, port and manufacturing centre. Moncton is the principal Francophone Acadian centre and Fredericton the historic capital. New Brunswick is the only officially bilingual province and about one-third of the population lives and works in French. The province's pioneer loyalist and French cultural heritage and history come alive in street festivals and traditional music. Central Canada. More than half the people in Canada live in cities and towns near the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River in southern Quebec and Ontario, known as Central Canada, and the industrial and manufacturing heartland. Southern Ontario and Quebec have cold winters and warm, humid summers. Together, Ontario and Quebec produce more than three-quarters of all Canadian manufactured goods. Quebec. Nearly 8 million people live in Quebec, the vast majority along or near the St. Lawrence River. More than three-quarters speak French as their first language. The resources of the Canadian Shield have helped Quebec to develop important industries, including forestry, energy and mining. Quebec is Canada's main producer of pulp and paper. The province's huge supply of fresh water has made it Canada's largest producer of hydroelectricity. Quebecers are leaders in cutting-edge industries such as pharmaceuticals and aeronautics. Quebec films, music, literary works and food have international stature, especially in La Francophonie, an association of French-speaking nations. Montreal, Canada's second-largest city and the second-largest mainly French-speaking city in the world after Paris, is famous for its cultural diversity. Ontario at more than 12 million, the people of Ontario make up more than one-third of Canadians. The large and culturally diverse population, natural resources and strategic location contribute to a vital economy. Toronto is the largest city in Canada and the country's main financial centre. Many people work in the service or manufacturing industries, which produce a large percentage of Canada's exports. The Niagara region is known for its vineyards, wines and fruit crops. 
Ontario farmers raise dairy and beef cattle, poultry and vegetable and grain crops. Founded by United Empire Loyalists, Ontario also has the largest French-speaking population outside of Quebec, with a proud history of preserving their language and culture. There are five Great Lakes located between Ontario and the United States. Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, Lake Huron, Lake Michigan in the USA, and Lake Superior, the largest freshwater lake in the world. Prairie Provinces Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta are the prairie provinces, rich in energy resources and some of the most fertile farmland in the world. The region is mostly dry with cold winters and hot summers. Manitoba Manitoba's economy is based on agriculture, mining, and hydroelectric power generation. The province's most populous city is Winnipeg, whose exchange district includes the most famous street intersection in Canada, Portage and Main. Winnipeg's French Quarter, Saint Boniface, has Western Canada's largest francophone community at 45,000 people. Manitoba is also an important centre of Ukrainian culture, with 14% reporting Ukrainian origins, and the largest Aboriginal population of any province at over 15%. Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, once known as the breadbasket of the world and the wheat province, has 40% of the arable land in Canada and is the country's largest producer of grains and oilseeds. It also boasts the world's richest deposits of uranium and potash used in fertilizer and produces oil and natural gas. Regina, the capital, is home to the training academy of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Saskatoon, the largest city, is the headquarters of the mining industry and an important educational, research and technology centre. Alberta Alberta is the most populous prairie province. The province and the world-famous Lake Louise in the Rocky Mountains were both named after Princess Louise Caroline Alberta, fourth daughter of Queen Victoria. Alberta has five national parks, including Banff National Park, established in 1885. The rugged badlands house some of the world's richest deposits of prehistoric fossils and dinosaur finds. Alberta is the largest producer of oil and gas, and the oil sands in the north are being developed as a major energy source. Alberta is also renowned for agriculture, especially for the vast cattle ranches that make Canada one of the world's major beef producers. The West Coast British Columbia is known for its majestic mountains and as Canada's Pacific Gateway. The Port of Vancouver, Canada's largest and busiest, handles billions of dollars in goods traded around the world. Warm air streams from the Pacific Ocean gives the BC coast a temperate climate. British Columbia British Columbia, or BC, on the Pacific coast, is Canada's westernmost province, with a population of 4 million. The port of Vancouver is our gateway to the Asia Pacific. About one half of all the goods produced in BC are forestry products, including lumber, newsprint, and pulp and paper products, the most valuable forestry industry in Canada. BC is also known for mining, fishing, and the fruit orchards and wine industry of the Okanagan Valley. BC has the most extensive park system in Canada with approximately 600 provincial parks. The province's large Asian communities have made Chinese and Punjabi the most spoken languages in the cities after English. The capital, Victoria, is a tourist centre and headquarters of the Navy's Pacific Fleet. The Northern Territories The Northwest Territories, Nunavut and Yukon, contain one-third of Canada's land mass but have a population of only 100,000 people. There are gold, lead, copper, diamond and zinc mines. Oil and gas deposits are being developed. The north is often referred to as the land of the midnight sun because at the height of summer, daylight can last up to 24 hours. In the winter, the sun disappears and darkness sets in for three months. The northern territories have long cold winters and short cool summers. Much of the north is made up of tundra, the vast rocky Arctic plain. Because of the cold Arctic climate, there are no trees on the tundra and the soil is permanently frozen. Some continue to earn a living by hunting, fishing, and trapping. Inuit art is sold throughout Canada and around the world. Yukon. Thousands of miners came to the Yukon during the gold rush of the 1890s, as celebrated in the poetry of Robert W. Service. Mining remains a significant part of the economy. The White Pass and Yukon Railway opened from Skagway in neighboring Alaska to the territorial capital, Whitehorse, in 1900 and provides a spectacular tourist excursion across precipitous passes and bridges. Yukon holds the record for the coldest temperature ever recorded in Canada, 
minus 63 degrees Celsius. Caption. Images of Mount Logan and Sir William Logan with caption. Mount Logan, located in the Yukon, is the highest mountain in Canada. It is named in honor of Sir William Logan, a world-famous geologist, born in Montreal in 1798 to Scottish immigrant parents. Logan founded and directed the Geological Survey of Canada from 1842 to 1869 and is considered one of Canada's greatest scientists. Northwest Territories The Northwest Territories, NWT, were originally made up in 1870 from Rupert's Land and the Northwestern Territory. The capital, Yellowknife, with a population of 20,000, is called the Diamond Capital of North America. More than half the population is Aboriginal, Dene, Inuit, and Métis. The Mackenzie River, at 4,200 kilometers, is the second longest river system in North America after the Mississippi and drains an area of 1.8 million square kilometers. Nunavut. Nunavut, meaning our land in Inuktitut, was established in 1999 from the eastern part of the Northwest Territories, including all of the former district of Kiwatin. The capital is Iqaluit, formerly Frobisher Bay, named after the English explorer Martin Frobisher, who penetrated the uncharted Arctic for Queen Elizabeth I in 1576. The 19-member Legislative Assembly chooses a premier and ministers by consensus. The population is about 85% Inuit, and Inuktitut is an official language and the first language in schools. Captions. Image of an Inuit boy in Nunavut. Image of a caribou with caption. The caribou, also called reindeer, is a popular game for hunters and a symbol of Canada's north. The Canadian Rangers. Canada's vast north brings security and sovereignty challenges. Dealing with harsh weather conditions in an isolated region, the Canadian Rangers, part of the Canadian Forces Reserves, militia, play a key role. Drawing on indigenous knowledge and experience, the Rangers travel by snowmobile in the winter and all-terrain vehicles in the summer from Resolute to the magnetic North Pole and keep the flag flying in Canada's Arctic. Study questions. One of the basic requirements of citizenship is to demonstrate that you have adequate knowledge of Canada. The citizenship test is used to assess your knowledge of Canada and the rights and responsibilities of being a citizen in Canada. All the citizenship test questions are based on information provided in this study guide. You will be asked about facts and ideas presented in the guide. The following questions are similar to the questions that are found on the citizenship test. Use these questions to prepare for your test. All the answers can be found in this study guide. What are the three responsibilities of citizenship? A. Being loyal to Canada, recycling newspapers, serving in the Navy, Army, or Air Force. B. Obeying the law, taking responsibility for oneself and one's family, serving on a jury. C. Learning both official languages, voting in elections, belonging to a union. D. Buying Canadian products, owning your own business, using less water. The correct answer is B, obeying the law, taking responsibility for oneself and one's family, serving on a jury. What is the meaning of the Remembrance Day poppy? A, to remember our sovereign, Queen Elizabeth II. B, to celebrate Confederation. C, to honor prime ministers who have died. D. To remember the sacrifice of Canadians who have served or died in wars up to the present day. The correct answer is D. To remember the sacrifice of Canadians who have served or died in wars up to the present day. 3. How are members of Parliament chosen? A. They are appointed by the United Nations. B. They are chosen by the provincial premiers. C. They are elected by voters in their local constituency or riding. D. 
They are elected by landowners and police chiefs. The correct answer is C. They are elected by voters in their local constituency or riding. Other study questions. The following are some other study questions that you can use to prepare for the citizenship test. Name two key documents that contain our rights and freedoms. Identify four rights that Canadians enjoy. Name four fundamental freedoms that Canadians enjoy. What is meant by the equality of women and men? What are some examples of taking responsibility for yourself and your family? Who were the founding peoples of Canada? Who are the Métis? What does the word Inuit mean? What is meant by the term responsible government? Who was Sir Louis Hippolyte Lafontaine? What did the Canadian Pacific Railway symbolize? What does confederation mean? What is the significance of the discovery of insulin by Sir Frederick Banting and Charles Best? What does it mean to say that Canada is a constitutional monarchy? What are the three branches of government? What is the difference between the role of the Queen and that of the Prime Minister? What is the highest honor that Canadians can receive? When you go to vote on Election Day, what do you do? Who is entitled to vote in Canadian federal elections? In Canada, are you obliged to tell other people how you voted? After an election, which party forms the government? Who is your member of parliament? What are the three levels of government? What is the role of the courts in Canada? In Canada, are you allowed to question the police about their service or conduct? Name two Canadian symbols. What provinces are referred to as the Atlantic provinces? What is the capital of the province or territory that you live in? For more information about Canadian citizenship, you can obtain citizenship application information and take advantage of the many resources that are available by telephone. For all areas within Canada, the toll-free call centre number is 1-888-242-2100. Online. You can visit the Citizenship and Immigration website at www.cic.gc.ca. Discover Canada can be downloaded from this website. Citizenship Classes. To obtain more information about citizenship classes, contact schools and colleges in your area. Go to your local library or community centre. Contact local settlement agencies or ethnocultural associations. For more information about Canada, ask a librarian to help you find books and videos about Canada. You could begin by asking for these books. The Canada Yearbook, published by Statistics Canada. Canada, a portrait, published by Statistics Canada. How Canadians Govern Themselves, by Eugene Forsey. It can be found online at the Library of Parliament at www.parl.com. GC.ca. The Canadian Encyclopedia, including the Youth Encyclopedia of Canada. www.thecanadianencyclopedia.com. The Story of Canada, written by Janet Lunn and Christopher Moore. Published by Leicester Publishing Limited. Symbols of Canada, 
published by Canadian Heritage. A Crown of Maples, published by Canadian Heritage. Canada, a people's history. Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Canada's History, published by Canada's National History Society. Kayak, Canada's History Magazine for Kids, published by Canada's National History Society. For more information about federal programs and services, you can obtain information about Canada by telephone or on the internet. By telephone, call toll free 1 800 O Canada 1 800 622 6232 or 1 800 465 7735 TTY. Internet. The Government of Canada website contains information about many government programs and services. It can be found at www canada.gc.ca The following are other websites of interest that provide information on topics found in this guide. Websites about Canada The Crown and Governor General www.gg.ca Canadian Heritage www.pch Dot gc dot ca. Atlas of Canada http colon backslash backslash atlas dot nrcan dot gc dot ca backslash site backslash index dot html Teachers and Youth Corner, www.cic.gc.ca, backslash English, backslash games, backslash index dot ASP. Parks Canada, www.parkscanada.gc.ca. Institute for Canadian Citizenship, www.icc-icc.ca. The Historica Dominion Institute, www.historica-dominion.ca. The Canadian Experience, a civic literacy project for the new mainstream www.cdnexperience.ca Websites about Canadian history Canadian Confederation www.collectionscanada.gc.ca backslash confederation backslash index hyphen e dot html confederation for kids www dot collections canada dot gc dot ca backslash confederation backslash kids backslash index hyphen e dot html First Among Equals, The Prime Minister in Canadian Life and Politics, www.collectionscanada.gc.ca, backslash Prime Ministers. Virtual Museum of Canada, www.virtualmuseum.ca. Canadian War Museum, www.warmuseum.ca Canadian Black History, www.cic.ca
www.gc.ca backslash English backslash games backslash museum backslash main dot ASP Websites about military history and remembrance A Day of Remembrance www. 